I'd like to call the Planning Commission meeting of uh, September 25th, 2017 to order and invite Belinda to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I wasn't look. I wasn't looking around. Was everybody standing for that, or did anyone kneel? <laughs> <laughs> um, Madam Secretary, if you could please call the roll. Please let the record show that Commissioner Donor has an excused absence. The rest of the Planning Commissioners are present. Thank you. With that, um, we have approval of the minutes. Move for approval of the minutes of August 28th. I'd second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second if we could vote on that. Okay, that item passes uh, for one with one abstention by Commissioner Donor. Moving on um, to public comments. Anyone wishing to address the Planning Commission during the public comment section on an <coughs> or on an agenda item is asked to complete a request to speak form available at the door. The completed form is to be submitted to the Planning Commission Secretary prior to an individual being heard by the Planning Commission. Any person wishing, wishing to address the Planning Commission on a subject other than those scheduled on the agenda is requested to do so at this time. In order to conduct a timely meeting, there will be a three minute time limit per person. State law prohibits planning commission from taking any action on any specific item unless it appears on the posted agenda. Madam Secretary, do we have any public comment forms? Thank you. Okay, moving on. Consent calendar, there's no items on the consent calendar. Public hearings. Item number two. <coughs> Coastal Development Permit CDP 17-0013 and Site Development Permit SDP 17-0020 to demolish an existing single-family residence and construct a new 3838-square-foot single-family residence and attach two-car garage within the residential Beach Road 12 RBR 12 zone located at 35365 Beach Road. Do we have a, a, a presentation? Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. Yes, Belina, <laughs> Belina, Belinda Dinas will lead our presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, for the introduction. Good evening, Chair McCann, Planning Commissioners, and members of the public. My name is Belinda Dinas, staff planner for the proposed project at 35365 Beach Road. This project is before you for review and approval of coastal development permit and a site development permit because the proposed project involves demolition of an existing single family dwelling and construction of a new single family dwelling on property located in the coastal zone, appeals jurisdiction, and floodplain overlay district. Here's an aerial of the immediate area along Beach Road. The subject site is located in the Capistrano Beach Community Association area. Uh, which is a gated community on the ocean side of Pacific Coast Highway and the railroad tracks. The subject property is located within the residential Beach Road RBR 12 zone and within the floodplain overlay district FP3, which is identified as a coastal high hazard area subject to wave action. The property is developed with an existing uh, 1,400 square foot, one story, single family with an attached two car garage, which will be demolished entirely. All of the existing improvements, including landscaping, will be removed. The lot is approximately 4,795 square feet in area. And here is um, an aerial uh, of the back side of the property facing from the beach. The applicant proposes to construct a new 3,838 square foot single family residence, uh, which consists of two stories, uh, 
approximately five bedrooms and seven bathrooms. There are um, new landscaping and hardscape proposed throughout the entire site, and the proposed project meets all of the development standards for the RBR 12 zone as well as the FP3 regulations. Here's a chart showing the site's development standards and how the proposed project is in compliance with these standards. A coastal hazards analysis and wave uprush uh, study has been completed and prepared, um, reviewed by the city's planning and engineering departments with um, uh, affirmation of the base flood elevation of 19 feet. The maximum height of the structure will not exceed 24 feet, measured 18 inches above the base flood elevation. Um, as I mentioned, the proposed height meets all of the development standards for the zone and for new construction within the floodplain district. Here's a site plan showing the proposed home and the layout of the proposed garage. In yellow, you can see the uh, patio string line um, dashed on the plan, and the orange line is the structure string line, which is specified in the uh, zone requirements. Um, all of the deck, um, stairs, balcony, and fencing are in compliance with uh, special development standards for Beach Road. The first floor includes an open concept living, dining, and kitchen area. The uh, garage and um, storage area are considered non-habitable space. On the second floor, uh, all five bedrooms are located with associated bathrooms. The exterior will be up updated with a country French style with architectural features such as wall offsets, stone veneer, copper standing seam, metal roofing, all of which contribute to the project's design articulation. The applicant has provided a proposed exterior color and material sample board shown above. Here's a section as it relates to the base flood elevation with um, the proposed improvements 18 inches above that elevation. The Planning Commission must make the following findings in order to approve a coastal development permit. Staff pro provides justification and analysis in support of these findings as described in the staff report and the draft resolution. The proposed project meets the development standards of the municipal code and is consistent with the city's general plan. The project is located between the nearest public roadway and the sea, and public coastal access exists along this portion of the coast as shown at Capistrano Beach. Furthermore, this project constitutes infill development of an already developed property with no significant environmental impacts with the proposed work. Site development permit is required for any new construction within areas designated as flood-related hazard. Staff has determined that, that the proposed project is reasonably safe from flooding with flood-proofing measures applied to the design. The project does not adversely affect the cum cumulative effect of the proposed development along Beach Road, and the project satisfies the design criteria of the Coastal Floodplain Development Study. The draft resolution further details findings in support of the site development permit. Staff recommends approval of the proposed project subject to the findings and conditions in the draft resolution. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have regarding the project and the staff report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Planner, Senior Planner Dinas. Um, do any of the commissioners have any questions for staff? Okay, seeing none, we will open the public hearing. Any public speakers? Anybody want to speak on this project? Okay, S seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open it up for commission discussion. Does anybody have any feelings or anything they want to express or make a motion? May I? Sure. <coughs> Uh, Chairman, I would make a motion that uh, we approve 
Coastal Development Permit CDP 17-0013 and Site Development Permit SDP 17-0020 to demolish an existing single family residence and construct a new 3,838 3, square foot single family residence and attach two car garage with the residential Beach Road 12 RBR 12 zone located at 35, 365 Beach Road. Um, that's my motion. Thank you. We have a second. I second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Before we call for a vote, I just I just want to comment that I think it's a great looking project. I I reviewed everything. Um, I think it's uh, well thought out, and um, just want to make that comment. So, with that, if we could vote on the motion. That item passes uh, four votes affirmative and Commissioner Donor absent. Congratulations. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> See, this was anticlimactic, right? <laughs> it wasn't so tough, right? <laughs> Thank you. Moving on. <clears throat> um, item number three. Coastal Development Permit CDP 17-0016, Variance V17-0001, and Site Development Permit STP 17-0029 for an addition and remodel to an existing duplex in the Residential Beach Road Duplex 18, RBRD 18, zone located at 35099 Beach Road. If we could have a presentation from staff. Senior Planner John Champa will give our presentation. Thanks. Great. Good evening, Chair and Planning Commissioners. John Champa, I'm the case planner for the Beach Road project, uh, as stated, which is a request for a coastal development permit, variance, and site development permit. The project's located in the same uh, beach community as the previous project, in the, but however, this project is located in the RBRD 18 zoning designation, which allows for duplexes. The existing property is improved with a 3,656 square foot duplex with a carport that uh, allows for three vehicles. As you can see, the property is um, located on the beach side of the uh, PCH. Just to give you a little background on this property. Uh, this is a duplex that was constructed in 1964 with a variance to reduce the front yard setback for the carport specifically up to five feet. Uh, as a condition of the variance, which was included, uh, the original variance with your packet, restricted the living area above the carport. Um, the structure is considered legal non-conforming because it is located in the FP3 uh, flood zone overlay and is a slab on grade foundation, as well as it only provides three covered parking spaces when four is required. The non-conforming structure uh, because of its uh, construction location in the FP3 overlay is limit limited to a one-time 10% square footage addition as well as an annual remodel of 10% of the current value of the home. Those two are looked at separately in terms of uh, review. This is an image uh, or images of the existing property. Uh, as you can see in the front elevation and the rear elevation is a uh, typical 1960s construction of the era. Project scope uh, is requested today is for a 364 square foot addition to the second floor over a portion of the carport uh, to allow for a new bedroom and bathroom, as well as a facade remodel to convert the structure to a contemporary design, enclosure of a portion of the carport, new stairway to lead to the upper unit, and repair of the uh, upper unit's ocean uh, side deck. This is a site plan identifying the location of the proposed improvements. Um, the carport uh, along with the, behind the carport is, are the new stairs, uh, facade remodeling along the sides, and the um, addition, which is the dash line here which would be located over the carport and would comply with the required 15 foot second story setback requirement. This is a rendering of the project. Uh, if approved and completed, as you can see, it transforms the property to the 
new proposed contemporary design. The project as, as proposed requires a coastal development permit and in review of that, uh, the project does comply with the city's certified LCP. Uh, the proposed improvements do comply with the zoning development standards. The project has no impact to recreation or coastal access as uh, it is a private community located between the first pri private road and the beach. And there is the Capistrano Beach uh, public parking and access located within 560 feet of the project site. The requested variance um, is in response to the original variance that was approved back in 1964 for the five foot carport setback. As previ previously stated, there was a condition that restricted the uh, living area above the carport. And the new variance is, is proposed to clarify the original approval uh, and it, its original intent, uh, as well as to, to address the restriction in that the proposed addition would comply with the required 15 foot second story side yards or uh, front yard setback requirements, as well as all the other uh, appro appropriate uh, development standards for the site. This cross section is to illustrate the proposed request as well as the development standards in that the the blacked dash line is the developable envelope of the project. The variance was uh, originally established for the carport and the new proposal would be located above the carport. However, as previously stated, would comply with the required 15 foot front yard setback. It's important to note that this 15 foot setback is consistent with other developments within the neighborhood as it is a development standard for this um, RBRD 18 uh, zoning district. So there is no special consideration or request for this proposal. Site development permit. Oh. The site development permit review uh, and was reviewed to ensure compliance with the 10% addition as well as the annual 10% valuation for the project. And it does comply with those standards, which are uh, implemented by the requirements of the FP3 uh, overlay. The addition is located on the second story inland, um, which is a requirement of the floodplain overlay as well. And the addition is architecturally designed to be integrated with the design of the structure, as well as provide visual relief to reduce massing and comply with the city's de design guidelines. The project is in conformance with the city's LCP, as well as the public access and public recreational policies of the Coastal Act and complies with the required findings for the Coastal Development Permit, Variance, and Site Development Permit. That concludes staff's presentation. Staff and the applicant are available for any questions. Yes, I have a question. Um, is the project now required to, I, I couldn't find this, to include four covered parking spots since it originally only had three? Or is there some sort of special dispensation where that doesn't need to occur? That would that would not be applicable here, be given that the um, the scope of the project is not expanding the structure by more than fifty percent, which would be the trigger to provide the required additional parking space. However, additional parking is provided um, across Beach Road um, of three parking spaces, so uh, the site will be able to provide adequate parking for the site. For like six, three and three, three across and three within the, the compounds of the structure? That's correct. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Other commissioners have questions for staff? Uh, yeah, I have a couple questions. Commissioner Nelson. So I was, went out there today. There's a bunch of storage unit uh, areas. I think they're labeled, in fact, in the carport. Maybe the applicant tells where the new storage is going to go since there's going to be a door on the carport. So I'd like to understand a little bit about how the, how the duplex functions, uh, given that we're closing off a portion of uh, the uh, carport for use. So I, that question, um, I think you just answered it, but I was buried in my uh, reading here. Did you say there's going to be three spaces across the street? There are three spaces across okay. the street, which exist currently. Okay, great. Um, I think that's it for, for 
for now. So when the applicant gets up, maybe you can address that. If we could have, if there's a, someone from the applicant side, the architect or applicant to address Commissioner Nelson's question, that'd be great. If you could please, yeah, you can spin that around. <laughs> <laughs> Turn this around too, if it's easier. <coughs> and if you could uh, state your name and city for the record, please, that'd be great. Yes, good evening, Chairman, fellow commissioners. Uh, my name is Rob Williams. I'm with Studio Six Architects. We're the architects for Mr. and Mrs. Halleck. That's the current owner of the duplex. Um, my uh, office is located in San Clemente. I'm a resident myself of San Juan Capistrano. The, um, to answer your question, uh, the first question, uh, Commissioner Nelson, the existing storage there is a combination of just not just storage that's in the existing carport. It's a water heater, there's a washer and dryer, those um, types of things that are there. If you look at the drawings presently, most of this, we're going with a, a tankless water heaters on these units, uh, which is pretty much what we're doing these days with you know, any kind of construction. And uh, there is still provisions, different location in that same location on the other side for a washer and dryer unit. Uh, the unit itself on the second floor has a stack washer and dryer that's presently inside. So um, we are closing off uh, two of the parking spaces with the garage door. It's got that breakaway because one of the things that's required is because it's a non-conforming um, slab on grade as it relates to base flood elevation, in case there's a huge flood and goes through the house, it hits the garage, it will break away the garage door, allow the water to go right through it. So it's a special garage door. And then on the sides, if you notice, it's not completely um, sealed off on the side of the carport that's being enclosed. It is a louvered system to allow also um, airflow and also uh, reduces the amount of, of coverage as far as enclosed space, which is a requirement from staff. Um, I hope that's answered your question as far as the existing storage. And back to the parking, uh, today there's existing carport has three, which we're not changing that. There is a lease on pretty much everybody that has homes on there across the road um, that is leased by OCTA and the railroad to those additional parking spaces and they um, use those parking spaces today in case there's you know, guests that come over. Uh, is there any other questions? I do have a couple comments uh, that I did talk to uh, Planner uh, Jonathan about regarding one of the conditions that we have a question for the Planning Commission on. Does anybody have any questions for the architect? I just have one and it may be the staff and not the architect, but the variance is for the addition of um, the extra bedroom on the second floor, taking it out over it, but what is there any issue with the first floor when you're dividing the one bedroom up into two now? Does that come into play at all? Because we're actually adding two bedrooms to the building itself. The addition of a bedroom will not trigger um, any additional parking for the site, so it will not have any impact as, as that's regarding. One doesn't, two won't either. Correct. Okay. I have a question, and then you're welcome to address your questions as well. But um, the question I had is, <coughs> The garage door, at what setback distance is it going? Is it from the right-of-way line? From the property line itself, it'll be six feet. That's presently where the carport is built today. So we're not changing the location of the uh, remodeled carport or where the garage door is being added. So it's six feet. Um, so essentially, if you look at the way the carport is today, if you put a garage door on that carport, that's the same location of what we're doing. We're not, we're not making any closer to the uh, property line that presently exists today. Thank you. So uh, with that being the answer, do you, do you feel, John, that that kind of meets with the spirit of the, of the proposed variance? You know, there was talk of 15-foot setback, and the second story addition is going up to this, doesn't begin within the 15-foot line, but now we're going to have a garage door and some structure at a six foot setback line. What's staff's you know, thinking on that? Staff's review of that, uh, we did discuss that uh, extensively and felt that um, as long as the set setback 
is being maintained at the existing condition of six feet, uh, which is how the variance was originally approved. Uh, the structure is still being maintained as a carport functionally in that it is open. Uh, it still meets the intent and the original approval of the uh, variance. So, so it's, it's, is it still going to be a three car carport with a garage door so it's open on the sides? Correct. So, if, so in looking at the rendering, obviously there's the one on the right side that's completely open, correct? Yes. But then behind, there's a, there's a garage door and then the left side is open? The, the rendering uh, gives it the appearance that it is more closed. However, you see if the dark area under the shaded right. uh, component of it is um, very open. There's spacing between the wood slats at one foot a piece, along with a larger opening on the top and bottom to ensure that it is an open uh, design. And then that is also reflected on the other side of the garage or the of the of the carport on the let's call it the south side of the structure. So there's there's so you can't walk into it from the sides. There's wood slats with a maximum one foot opening. Is that? Is That's that, correct. Understanding that correctly. Okay. I have no further questions. You're welcome to discuss your condition and issues. Yeah, I mean, generally everything looks fine. I'll be honest with you. We've been working with Jonathan on this project for a while and um, very impressed with how thorough he is, maybe sometimes too thorough. Um, <laughs> takes a little longer sometimes to go through the process, but uh, very professional, uh, very happy to work with John. I did a very nice job. Um, but we do have one question that I brought up last week when we got the conditions. It's number 26, and it says, in group R uh, occupancy, essentially we are a duplex, um, two or more units, wall and floor ceiling assembly separating dwelling units or guest rooms from each other and from public space, such as interior corridors and service areas shall be provided airborne sound installation for walls and both airborne impact sound installation for s floors and ceiling assemblies. This really has to do with the existing duplex. Um, we're not creating any um, additional problems with this type of condition. The, you know, because of the fact that the duplex itself, not the area that we're adding, the one-time addition of 10% on the uh, inward side above the existing carport, we're allowed to improve 10% annually. So in order for us to, this condition concerns us, that it gives a potential that when we submit for plan check, that the building department, because they're the ones that came up with this, has nothing to do with the planning division, this was a building uh, condition, could make us go through inside the existing and make us do uh, sound attenuations between the floors because there are a unit above, a unit below, and a lot more requirements that if we needed to do this, again, usually that triggers if you do more than 50%, we're doing 10% because we're one, we can't do any more than that on an annual basis, that if this condition is on there, we have to address it, and all these conditions when we submit plans, and this condition would be difficult to address because let's say the building division comes back and says, I still want this taken care of. The dollars that we have, to, and again, we're only dealt with 10% based on the value of the structure. The dollars that we have could be eaten up just on this alone, which would leave us no money to do any additional improvements in the structure that we have submitted today. So that's our concern. And if this stays on here, that could take time to address and maybe doesn't get addressed. At the end of the day, since that condition is on here, the only way this can be removed, if it stays, is to come back before you guys. And, you know, not that we don't like seeing you guys all the time. Um, we would want this to be at least some kind of language in here that says that, really, I personally would like to have this completely eliminated from the conditions of approval. That's my question. And John and I talked about this a little bit, and I told him I would still be bringing it up to you guys. So he, I believe, has an answer. Um, we'll see what he says. Thank you. Um, I'd find it hard to believe that you could do your whole addition, and yet this is kind of equal in cost to strip some drywall and put some insulation in there. But that's beside the point. We'll get to we'll, we'll get to the details of this. Um, John, did you have? Sounds like you've considered this issue. Do you have any further r reporting on it? 
staff feels that um, that based on the project scope, this likely is is something that uh, will be vetted through the building permit plan check process and is okay with removing this condition in that when a project does come through the building department, they review it for insurance with all of the building code requirements. So uh, staff feels more than comfortable that uh, all of the requirements associated with the building code will be addressed through the building plan check. And if this is a condition that's not necessary, it won't need to be addressed at all. I'm sorry, maybe I'm slow. Did you say that the building department was okay removing this condition or you're just saying that that when they come through, they're okay leaving it in and when it comes to plan check, they'll look at compliance with all the building codes? When it, they're okay with it being removed and then when it, when it does come through, the entire project will be vetted for compliance with building permit plan check because these are just conceptual plans that they're looking at now. And so um, when it is thoroughly reviewed with the detailed construction drawings, um, if it is determined that um, you know soundproofing or some other requirement um, is needed, that'll need to be complied with just for approval via the building department. Uh, a condition of approval is not necessary to ensure the project complies with the building code. Okay, thank you. Um, so that's what building department said. Is planning okay with this condition being struck as well? Yes. Okay, thank you. Do any of my fellow commissioners have question or issue with this condition? You know, my, my experience has been that um, planning conditions do very little for uh, building inspectors and building, building plan checkers, so I don't have a concern. Um, I'd be more concerned about other issues that could come up during the construction than a planning condition, so I don't have an issue with it. If, from my perspective, building code is what it is. We don't regulate it. Um, if they're comfortable removing it, I'm fine with it. I mean, I, I, I guess my question would be, why, we, why is it still in here? Um, you know, I can't speak for the building department. It, it may have just been a standard condition for any duplex, and they incorporate that in there not knowing what the full scope is when they get the detailed construction drawings. But they're okay um, taking it out is what they're saying? Yeah, yeah. Based on their, you know, how they apply these conditions, these are more uh, conditions for the applicant to understand um, key components of the building code that may be applicable for their project when they do come in for construction drawings. So it'll ensure that they're aware of all the nuances of the building code when they do come in. Uh, because the applicant is an architect, he is very familiar with the building code um, and he's suited to address all of the code compliance when it does come in per the building code. So would it be, should we just, this should just be deleted by staff? Yeah, I feel comfortable because it, it's it's not necessary for us to have a condition of approval that says you have to comply with the building code because they can't get an, a permit issued with, if they don't comply with the building code. So that's why staff feels very comfortable that um, the removal of this condition does not put the city in any um, position where if in the event a sound attenuation is needed for one com component of the project or another, it's it's a requirement per the building code and it will not um, you know have any um, issue that it's not in the conditions of approval I have a thought or comment on that issue as well <clears throat> um, just I'm just gonna throw it out there in reading it what I would have suggested is before I heard that staff is okay removing it would be to say hey, you need to have the floor to ceiling uh, sound attenuation wherever you're opening that assembly to do the remodel. So you don't have to go in and retrofit the whole house, but just as you're going over the garage or whatever, carport, anywhere where you are in fact opening that assembly to throw some insulation in there. That would have been my compromise suggestion. But Could I offer a uh, potential revision? Sure. We're at at the end of all of this, we I, we add in the text, you know, where determined necessary by the building department for compliance with the building code. That way, if it's if it's not required, then it's not required. However, 
you know, we're referencing the building code, which is the, you know, review that this is being justified by. Do you, Rob, do you have any I have no problem concern with that? No. We, we could do that, or if they're okay striking it, then I'm okay striking it too. So um, we'll see where a motion goes on this issue. Um, I have a question, something that um, Mr. Williams brought up. With respect to the 10% valuation ad issue, he said 10% of the structure's value. And I was kind of thinking in my mind, 10% of the property value. Is there a clarification? Because that's a huge difference out yes, there right is. now. Is there a is there a clarification on on that, John? Yes. So the value. Sorry, the valuation is determined based on the building departments uh, how they value projects. So it's it's typically a per square foot, or you know per linear foot, depending on what the improvement is. So this project we um, basically broke down the scope and went through the building departments. Um, valuations depending on the pro proposed work like the uh, the addition is about 195 square feet per square foot however the addition is not included in the overall valuation but they have the same for windows and the you know the stucco and all those exterior improvements so that those numbers are established based on the building department's valuations and those um, change you know I believe annually and annually or whenever they are redoing their uh, the fees and assessments. So it's only based on the structure alone and the improvements associated with the structure. So, so there was an analysis done already by the building department to make sure there was compliance with this issue? That's correct. Okay, thank you. I have no other questions. Do my fellow commissioners have any other questions for staff or applicant? I don't, thank you Thanks. very much. Um, I think I think we um, kind of merged a little bit. I think that was still in like s staff or commissioner questions. So with that, I should probably open the public hearing. And I have no additional, no additional request to speak. So with that, I'll close the public hearing and um, invite commissioners to discuss the item. If anyone has any they'd like to discuss or consider I do I have um, a couple things so I'm we just had a, a duplex come through here and I can't remember how many spaces they provided but um, and I you know this is one of those topics that I can get pretty riled up on uh, because I actually think we spend a lot of time focused too focused on parking uh, but I don't think that it's ex we should go to the extreme on either side of the argument. So one of the questions I guess I would, or one of the things I'm struggling with is the fact that we're closing off the garage. I know there's slats in the side, but we're fundamentally changing the project. The reason I like carports is they are used for cars, period. They're not used for storage. They're not used for other stuff. Um, and when you put a door in front of that, it changes it from a carport into a garage. And um, I think it changes the project, and I think it changes the um, the intent of the variance. And so there's this, for me, a, a balancing act of trying to be reasonable and rational, but also not uh, just approving it because there's a variance and they're allowed to do it. Um, I think we have, as a commission, it's our job to temper how these things come through and make sure that we look at a, a much bigger picture. And so when we start hammering on other applicants for more parking than is required, and then we have a project that doesn't meet the requirements, I think leaving it broad is, is important. So um, with that, I'm, like I said, I'm st struggling to find the reason to support the, effectively the variance is what you're, is what you're saying, right? Is a, it's a, we need, they need the variance in order to expand the upper floor. Um. Yes, yeah, it's a little bit of an odd um, scenario in that the original approval was for a carport with no livable space above it. However, didn't provide clarity as far as, well, what is that restriction for the space above? Uh, the intent of this variance is to provide that clarity for the addition above to say that 
um, in addition above is allowed. However, it does need to comply with the 15 foot second story setback requirements. Staff review of this application looked at, uh, well, you know, we want to make sure, as you said, you know, that um, the original approval and the intent of that, that it was a carport. And so we really looked at the design of the structure and what was being proposed to ensure that it still is technically a carport as well as allowing the property owner to improve the property and its appearance in providing them the ability to um, provide some additional security for their property given that it is um, right now just basically open parking area. It's not, there is, there's no element of enclosure or security. And maybe the applicant can speak to, you know, the, the desire to that, but however, that was staff's review in that uh, it is still functionally a carport uh, the addition is really um, to provide the clarity for the original restriction and its intent. Gotcha. Okay. So, I'm, and I'll just go on a little bit further and say I don't have an issue with the 15 foot setback, waiving that, removing that as, you know, modifying the variance for, for you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's when we throw a garage door on the carport is where I have a, ch where I have a challenge. So, I'll just kind of leave it at that for discussion purposes if I could jump in um, I too was you know you heard my earlier questions about now we're getting a garage effectively a garage you know it it might be technically a carport but it kind of looks like a duck and quacks like a duck um, and has a garage door on the front of it at six foot setback um, so I, I definitely you know that gives me a lot of pause as well. So with that, I'd, I'd love to hear what other commissioners are thinking and feeling. The only comment I have, because I wasn't quite understanding, uh, is are there any concerns when you put that door on as far as the way run-ups and all kinds, if there's any kind of, you know, a lot of ocean action? I mean, it, is that going to be a problem if you've got a closed door compared to if you've got an open flood plain? So to speak. Well, they have the uh, kick-out panels on this, like all the other projects oh, okay. do. So, I don't think. I mean, I when you say kick-out panels, the garage, the panels at the bottom of the garage where they blow Just out blow and the out. water runs through. Okay, my understanding. Okay. I think the applicant. I think the. I think. Did you mention that they have kick-out panels? Uh, the garage door essentially is a function of that. However, um. Because of the scope of the project, the 10% threshold for addition or remodel does not trigger that requirement specifically, um, given that it's an existing structure. Um, if you're only improving it 10%, doesn't necessarily meet that threshold of that. And also functionally, uh, the breakaway panel is to be in a scenario where it goes underneath the house, through the caissons, to the through the garage, which is typically an on-grade structural element. This is a case where the entire house is on grade, so there, there's no going underneath the house. Um, so it would, it would essentially wrap around the house and go you know, through the garage and out if, if a wave were to go that far. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Williams, would you like to address Commissioner Nelson and my concerns. We need to open the public hearing again. Um, we'll reopen the public hearing. Okay, we're reopening the public hearing to hear Mr. Williams. Sorry about that. Good Commissioner, so I'm used Thank to you. this. Um, so the garage door, now remember the variance, just kind of a clarification. And again, we've been working on this. We started this project October of last year. So it's taken us 12 months to get before you guys. So the garage door itself, or in closing the garage door, we're tied to a 50%. That's why the open slats, the way things are set up, because if we go more than 50%, then it's now constitute an enclosed space. 
Uh, can you please clarify 50% of what? Of the perimeter walls. Garage door is not part of it because it's open. It's not a solid structure. The that's why also the louvers are on either side. That allows that to be also 50% open. It's not solid. So we've got uh, two sides. We've got louver to allow water to go through. It's not. A, it's also can't be protected as far as trying to store things in there that you might be. You know, most garages people will put their valuables in there. Um, this particular owner, this is not their main house. This is, they live in another part of the county. They come in. They have a duplex, and then they have one down below. If they choose to rent it out, obviously not short-term rentals, but they're going to be dealing with one-year rentals on the lower beach property. Um, so the variance itself has to do with the fact that in 1964, they allowed a carport to encroach closer or within five feet. We're six feet away, so within five feet. If that wasn't even there, um, then the addition itself would not, we wouldn't even be talking about a variance today if there is no 1964 variance at all. Because the addition that we're putting together is a, complies to the setback. So the carport itself, because there's other properties on there, and we're working on one right now, that has a garage that's eight and a half feet away. We're adding a second floor over top of that garage that meets the second floor set back off the front. Well, the garage might be eight and a half feet, but our addition is not making that worse. So we're not even applying for a variance. We don't even, uh, variance is not even required, even though the existing garage does not meet, the, we're not changing that. Because of the 1964 carport that had that stipulation that is a carport only, nothing can be over top of it. We are asking to put a, essentially a master bedroom suite above the existing carport complying with the variance, uh, with the setbacks as by the city, but we have to ask for a variance because of the 1964 variance that was done long before there was a city of Dana Point. So it was back in the county. So the putting a garage door or not putting a garage door has nothing to do with the findings as it relates to whether or not you approve a variance or not. It's because the variance is there because the carport was granted a variance in 1964 and now we have to change that variance by putting a second floor that complies, but has nothing to do with enclosing the garage itself. Uh, I, I, go ahead. Can you might just remove the uh, carport? Car, if we tear the carport down? Yeah. Remember, one of the things, we've got the 10% of the value of the structure that we remodel on an annual basis, so that's one piece. The other piece is you're allowed a one-time 10% expansion on the inward side, not the seaward side, but on the inside of the property. Um, and it's a square footage. We're at, we're about a foot and a half, two feet below that. If I tear that garage down and rebuild that garage, that's the only thing I'm going to be able to put back in there. No, don't, don't put anything back. And you don't need a variance for your second floor. Oh, no, I need a variance no matter what. If I, t if I come back with that carport the way it is and say we didn't touch it at all, I would still need a variance. The enclosing the garage door and adding the garage door is not changing whether I need a variance or not. I understand. So what I'm saying is remove this, the carport entirely. So the variance was for the carport. It had a condition that said you can't live above it. You can't build habitable space above right. the carport. And now you want us to modify the variance in a sense, make findings that I'm struggling to find because I don't see a hardship, when you could just take the structure and knock it down and I you don't have a vari you don't need a variance now for your structure. But I can't, I can't, I can't knock it down and rebuild it. I'm not, I, I understand. I'm suggesting you never rebuild it. Never rebuild the carport? Correct. So you're essentially saying don't build the second floor, don't no, build the carport. You have, a, you have a 15 foot second floor setback. Right. Which you're complying with. Uh huh. S okay, so you can still do that without a carport there, couldn't you? I have to have covered parking. So if I take covered parking that presently exists today, I'm not making it any worse by the addition, like Jonathan said, but if I remove covered parking, now I am not in compliance with the existing duplex. So I would need a variance to remove covered parking now and allow it to be open. If, if I could interject for, for a moment. Um, it seems to me that what you just stated um, 
your original statement there had to do with, hey, the only reason we're talking about this is because I need a variance because of the original variance, and it was all variance related. You would be, your, this project would be in front of us with or without a variance. Full just, development, right? Just like the project before you that got approved, no problem. Um, so we, I haven't heard anybody here on the dais have take issue with your construction of the living space out to a 15 foot setback line. I don't, I haven't heard yet anybody opposing to that. What we are considering is the enclosure of the carport to a significantly more enclosed carport uh, by, by seemingly what's been discussed or agreed to. Um, that's what I'm, I'm hearing issue with. And um, John, I have a question. Mr. Williams stated that it's 50% open. He considered the front with a garage door, which I guess we're supposed to be calling it a carport door since it's not really a garage. Um, he considered that open even though the carport door would be closed. How would you, would you consider that uh, uh, open? Um, that wasn't part of our analysis for the opening, whether there was a, a garage door or not. It was essential. The the fifty percent threshold was specifically focused on the existing structure and and ensuring that fifty percent of the walls were to remain uh, to comply with our non-conforming ordinance. Uh, staff specifically looked at the side openings or the with the with the wood slats to ensure that we were providing an an open area to comply with the definition or be consistent with the definition for a carport and not a garage to ensure that um, the the function and the and the definition per the zoning code was consistent. Okay, thank you. Does anybody, for, for what it's worth, I'm, I'm. I think this is a significant expansion of the variance to, to call what I'm seeing on a rendering a carport. Um, I don't think it's, it, 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 what my understanding of a carport, it, it, it doesn't look like a carport to me. Um, so, but that's my thought. Um, does anybody else have a question or further request for information from Mr. Williams? Thank you. With that, I'll close the public hearing. I'm wondering if the city attorney has anything they want to weigh in on based on what we've discussed. And not specifically, although I can tell you that Mr. Schneider and I were pulling up the definition of carport from the municipal code. I'll let you read it. I think this might provide some help for the discussion. So the zoning ordinance defines a carport as a roofed structure providing space for the parking or storage of motor vehicles and enclosed on less than four sides. Did you say enclosed on less than four Less sides? than four sides. So it could properly be enclosed on three sides. Correct. One could assume from the facing one. And, and so in reviewing this project, as John had described, the two of the sides um, are open through sort of, a, I'll call it a lattice design, um, and it doesn't run all the way from ground to the plate height. There's a gap at the bottom and the top, and those are the two that, as staff, we interpreted to consider to be unenclosed. The front, the garage door, we were considering enclosed, and the rear, obviously, is enclosed, but we're considering at least two of the sides to be considered open based on the definition. Okay. If um, I'm probably ready to make a motion, but I'm more than happy to discuss this as long as anybody wants to. So if anybody has anything they'd like to further discuss or think about. Yeah, so I'll just, I mean, this is how I can support it. Maybe the applicant and staff need to get back together before we, before we go further, but um, I'm totally comfortable with the addition. I have no concern over that. You know, I, my, I'm slightly concerned to the, because we've increased the bedrooms, but because they're a duplex and they're in the duplex zoning, it doesn't tie to bedroom count, but they don't meet the parking requirements. So, you know, that, that's 
starting at ground zero were deficit, we, their deficit of parking. I firmly believe that the minute you enclose a garage, you create storage. I think the architect actually mentioned that there's stuff that's going to be in there. Um, it starts to degrade that garage or that carport garage, whatever you want to call it, goes from set up for vehicles to set up for a car and stuff. And we already are short here. So I'm, the motion I would support would be to, to uh, move forward with the project as proposed. Uh, with the following condition. One is they have to remove the front garage door, you know, the sides up to them if they want to leave the sides on. Um, and at the time of building permit issuance, they have a lease for those six spaces. I understand OCTA doesn't do forever leases, but we should at least have something that says they have an ongoing relationship with the um, parking across, you know, that they're three. the three extra spaces. I was over there today and, you know, a lot of them are chained off, and I'm not really sure how that op how that works. But we should make sure that that's in place. With that done, I don't see any reason not to support this. Where I'm struggling to support is making changes to a variance that had implications relative to living space above. And there there's a disconnect for me of we want to utilize the what we get the benefit out of the variance, but we don't want to deal with the impact of and the condition that came with it. And I don't understand why it's in there, I don't know, I don't have the details, um, and I'm not, I don't really want to know what they are, frankly, and I don't want to overturn those rules without making sure we're thinking through this from, a, um, you know, from start to finish here, that we don't create something, a monster, so to speak. Okay, I appreciate your thoughts on that. Um, I would take that a, a tiny step further and put something to the effect of you can't build it with an opening that's all perfectly set up to receive a garage door. So I don't know how that would be as far as, you know, header heights or widths or something for the opening, but, but not so that we, hey, we built it, it's just exactly ready to go, and a week later they make a phone call and the garage door's there and nobody notices or, or cares. Um, so, okay. Commissioner Opal, do you have thoughts? Um, basically, I'd really concur with what Commissioner Nelson, Nelson said. Sorry, <laughs> took a minute there. Uh, agree with that on the, the definition of the carport, especially and the concern with parking, in particular, since they're going from seven bedrooms to nine total with the addition and the modifications inside. Thank you, Com uh, Vice Chair Murphy. I. Well, I, I don't have anything more to say than what the t commissioners have said, and I agree with that in this, in this particular issue. Okay. So, um, so maybe Commissioner Nelson, you want to, did, did you, you didn't make a motion, you kind of talked theoretically about it, what a motion yeah, I mean, might I, look I would like. It would be great to hear from the applicant or the architect, so if we could open the, I'd, I'd, is this something that they'd be willing to do? Okay, and, the and then before he answers that question, I would want to ideally, for the record, I, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful project and I'm very supportive of the addition out to the 15 foot setback. Uh, I think it's, it is a beautiful job on the, on the re design. Um, and I would want to, if we were to pass a motion as discussed, I would want it to be something where the applicant could work it out with staff as far as that the, 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 they wouldn't have to come back to us. But with that, I'd like to reopen the public hearing and hear from Mr. Williams. Um, I can tell you right now, the applicant's not gonna want the, uh, or the owner, the door to be removed. Uh, that was a big deal. We've worked real close with staff on this. It was never an issue, the variance, remember, I understand the concern with the carport, but the variance never was an issue whether or not put the garage door on there. It was the 50% rule, that's why the louvers. Um, the variance itself uh, was related to a 1964 old variance regar regarding the carport. So this is this is actually comes with a shock, but we did talk to the applicant, and it's kind of a big deal to him to have that garage. He's got expensive cars when he parks there, and when he comes from time to time. Pretty much everybody, whether they're single family or duplexes, have garages. There's only a few, He's, this is one of them, that has open carports. He purchased this thing a year ago. So this isn't like he's had this property for a long time. Um, so. He's not, it was, this was a critical 
thing for him to have the garage door. We also, if you drive up and down there, there's a lot of homes that are close to the, the property line that for a variety of reasons, the garages and things like that, we don't know if they got variances, if they've got, but there are several. We're not the only one that's gonna be close. So it consistently, if you look at our house or duplex, with the way we're set back, the way the garage door is, the height of it, we're substantially smaller. If you look at the house right next door, I mean, it is massive compared to what we're asking. So he's gonna have concerns that, you know, I understand, um, you know, cause he could come in and, you know, tear the house down, build it up to the, just like the prefer, uh, previous, you know, to where it's 24 to 28 feet, depending on the, you know, the style of the house and the pitch and all that. He could build in a massive building here. He's just asking to renovate it to make kind of a tired piece of architecture that's there now, turn into what we believe is a nice piece of architecture, not going any further than the carport that's there today, setting the whole second floor addition back 15 feet, so it's substantially far, farther back. And all he's saying is architecturally, he wants to create a, back, you know, a garage door. The sides are open, the definition, which was um, written, uh, read by Mr. Matthew, we meet the intent of the definition of a carport. So to, uh, he's gonna have a very difficult time, so he's gonna probably say no, and if you guys vote to deny it, he'll take his chance over the council. Thank you. And for what it's worth, I respect an applicant's position and decision. Um, and yet we have to make a decision as well. Um, Commissioner, Vice Chair Murphy. Yeah, I, I, you two can better recognize what th this means. I'm looking at the paperwork generated by the city or the County of Orange uh, back in May 26, 1965. And on page 11, it says, Granted on condition there shall be no enclosed living portion of the dwelling located above the proposed carports. Does that say anything to either one of you? About the, what the intent was? Yeah, I mean, I think that for me the intent is very clear. The intent was if we're gonna let them encroach, they cannot build above it. That was the intent. It's in, I mean, it's black and white. That's what it, it seems to read from this. Now, I, I can't, we, we don't know what has transpired since. I don't, we surely don't have all the paperwork, but. Yeah, so if I read this and if I'm trying to put my, if I read this, it talks about a bridge, so they're gonna bridge over to it. Mm -hmm. um, the structure itself only was there to cover up the cars and be used for a sun deck, which you know, if they if they didn't put that structure up, this whole issue wouldn't be here today. Except for if someone came back and said, "Hey, we want to put a structure there and turn it into a garage," and then we'd have to do, give them a variance for putting the structure there within the twenty foot setback. I don't, I don't know back then what the hardship was, but it was clear that the entire intent was to have this as a separate structure away from the house with the only connection being a bridge and it was gonna be used as a sun deck. So, I mean, I don't know that it gets any clearer than that. I mean, I think when, again, it, it feels like the variance created a, a situation that put a structure up near the, the property line. Mm -hmm. The applicant wants to benefit from that under their terms and conditions, which don't address the hardship or any, because we're modifying this and have to make those findings. And that's, again, maybe we go, the, maybe send this back to staff to work with the applicant and he can come back, uh, maybe with conditions that are acceptable, but. Yeah, hearing your discussions, I think that really what we're looking at is probably three options. One might be to continue the public hearing and maybe get some more detail on the slotted size, uh, sides so you can determine whether or not you think that those slotted sides are really more of an enclosure or less of an enclosure. Um, I haven't seen pictures either way, so I can't tell you one way or another. Um, the second option would be to just outright deny the project, and the applicant can appeal if you'd like to to council, and they can deal with it up there. Um, the third option would be 
maybe something like Chairman Nelson su suggested, which would be an approval um, with the exception of the garage door being left out and the lease at the time of building permit issuance. Um, and then we might also want to deal with condition of approval number 26 somewhere in there if need be if we're going to approve some portion of the project. So that's kind of where I see the three options based on your discussions. Certainly there's an endless possibility out there, but that's what I think where we're looking at. And I can see that you're pointing fingers at me, so I know you want to say something. <laughs> um, I'd just like to make one additional point that was um, going through staff's evaluation of the proposal in that uh, the current code requires garage parking for a duplex. So that weighed in in our review of this in that, well, the original approval and the limitations per the code in terms of uh, once you fully enclose this area, you include it in the, the square footage expansion where the property is limited to 10%. So those were two factors there. One is the code now requires a garage, not a carport. So staff felt that this was bringing it closer to code compliance as well as consistency with the design guidelines that identify, you know, a sense of entry and, you know, a curb street appeal as well as consistency with the neighborhood in that any new construction going in there is going to have a garage, not a carport. So staff felt that this essentially hit a balance between one, meeting the square footage requirements, still technically being a carport, as well as bringing it closer to, closer to code compliance, given that um, we are providing at least the aesthetic appeal that the zoning ordinance and the design guidelines are, are pulling for with these projects. So that was another level of review and consideration that staff was um, weighing when looking at this proposal. Yeah, I mean, I, I think your review is a good review. I, I don't blame you. I, my challenge is that we're dealing with making justifi justifications and findings on an old variance. It's putting a garage door on does not bring it any further into compliance than it is today. Um, it just closes off an area, and, I, and we're intensifying the use. We're adding two bedrooms. I mean, it, to me, it's, again, I, this is a topic that I, you, I'm sure you, well, you may not be aware, but I firmly believe we need to address our you know, parking problem, but we got to do it judiciously. And one of the concerns I have with with garage doors is we don't enforce our own code. So once the door gets slapped on there, you know, we have a, a project that already is deficit, uh, two covered spaces. So we, we've, in one way we've helped it, and then another way I believe we've heard it. And so um, that's kind of where I'm with at with it. But I'm open to a discussion and. My, you know, I've changed my mind many times and willing to do that now. Uh, I'm just struggling on this one specifically related to, you know, the um, addition of the, the bedrooms, the addition of the garage door in an already uh, tight area. I, ha I have a, I, I, and I appreciate the nuanced, you know, considerations that you made. And yeah, any new project out there would have a garage door on it and it'd also be set back 15 to 20 feet. So it's kind of a, a significant massing, bringing it close to the public right of way. Um, I, I, you know, back to um, Matt's definition reading of enclosed sides or not. I, you know, the, I don't, I don't, I consider those sides pretty enclosed. Um, I know, like, you know, we're building a parking structure and. And there's ventilation requirements, and it has to be at least 50% open. And they're looking at 50% of the opening, not saying, okay, well, we have a few slats here, and so therefore we're going to consider this side an open side. Um, that's in another jurisdiction. But I, I am challenged to see that that's not enclosed. That's my feeling. Um, I see. Mr. Williams at the podium again, so I'm guessing <laughs> that he'd like us to reopen the public hearing yes, for what's now a record time. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I and we're happy to discuss it, by the way. No, so. I appreciate that, and I appreciate the thought process you guys are going through. You know, we, um, but you know, understand that for 12 months we've been going through the exact same thought process in a lot more detail and a lot longer than you guys have. You know, you guys have a snapshot at this, 
you know, you get this thing probably on a Friday, and then here we are on a Monday, and you're trying to make some kind of ruling. Um, the, you know, with working with, uh, we actually had another planner originally that we worked with, and then uh, John came over and helped us out. Uh, he is the beach road guy. And so um, that's, that's kind of the big thing. I mean, uh, when we found out about the 1964 variants of the existing carport, at one time we were going to bring the entire addition pretty close to that edge of the six feet, you know. The, we're not creating, I mean, what we're talking about tonight, whether we're adding a, a master suite, um, I mean, the existing structure has bedrooms in it today and it's got a three-car carport today. It's got three open spaces. Everybody on Beach Road generally have leases across the street. I mean, that's just the way the, the HOA was set up. Um, uh, you know, we obviously can give you documentation to show that it's not a big deal. So we have six parking spaces for two units with substantially more than you would have on any other duplex or apartment and even today on the new code for any new duplexes. So with the six parking spaces we have, we are substantially have more parking guests in covered that you would normally have on even a new duplex in the city of Dana Point. So we're not, we're not creating any problems by adding some additional square footage. It doesn't kick in. The variance isn't because we're adding a bedroom. The variance is because with 1964, again, we wouldn't even be here today except for the coastal development. If it wasn't, f if that carport was approved and there was nothing about the variance as it relates to, because like I said, there's several homes up and down Beach Road that got variances for garages. But there was no stipulation that said nothing could be built above it. This specific one had a stipulation that this is a, as you call it, a carport with a sun deck. And I don't think it's ever been a sun deck, but it's a flat roof. So the findings on this is, because, is mainly to deal with the 1964 language saying nothing could be built. There, like I said, I've got two other projects that have variances for it to allow garages, full garages, one within eight feet, and it was approved long before Dana Point, but it was approved. We're adding a, it's a single family home, it's not a duplex, we're adding a second floor over top of it. The second floor conforms to the 15 foot setback. The existing garage doesn't, but it's not a variance. So it's just because of the language that they put on this thing. If there was no language, we wouldn't even be talking about variances here. We probably wouldn't even be talking about garage doors. We'd be talking about a coastal development permit that is a legal non-conforming property because of the finished floor. We're adding a master suite. We're completely changing the architecture. To change the architecture, we've got to stay within that 10% on the existing building as it relates to the, what, how much we can improve. Um, that's mainly why we're here. So it's the language of the variance 1964. For some reason, this piece of property got that tag on it. And that's why we're asking for an interpretation to allow a second floor, albeit not you know, a setback issue, a second floor to be built on a structure carport that's closer than 20 feet, even though there's probably dozens of homes that have that, have had those variances, but it doesn't have that note on there. So we're not creating, we're adding a, uh, a garage door and talking with staff, that was a critical thing for the client one, and then John, I had forgotten about that. It was a big deal that a lot of the carports, uh, we're doing a project right now that John knows about, a copper lantern that is gonna be coming in front of you guys that has garages and carports. One of the big things is we need to close a lot of those carports into garages because that's kind of what we, that, what the city wants. They want garages. So this particular design, we've added that garage. So to essentially say we like everything, but I can't support the variance because of the garage door, I personally don't know, and again, I haven't memorized the findings, if the garage door was the reason the findings would deny or approve the variance to allow us to build on top of it. I don't think the garage door was part of the discussion on the findings or the reasons why staff, again, who spent a lot of time, allowed the findings to, they felt everything has met, been met because the garage door was never an issue with trying to say, did we meet the findings to grant the variance? So we're, we're creating something that 
I can tell you right now it's going to just kind of blow my client's mind that he could potentially be denied, not because of the addition, not because of the architecture, not because of how close it is, but because of the variance having this tag on it that nobody else has. And you guys are looking to deny it because he wants to put a door on the garage. That, that would be very difficult for me to go back. And normally he would be here, but he's out of town. He would be right here kind of saying, guys, you know, how is it that I'm being, in his word, probably punished to really do a nice job on the architecture compared to a tired thing, but you're not going to allow me to put a garage door even though there's tons of homes, several homes, not tons, but several homes that are close. Point of order. So. Please. Point of order. Can we sure. close the public hearing and just move okay, this Okay, yeah, I think you're kind of repeating your, your arguments. Thank you, Mr. Williams. So I'd make a motion. I, I'd like a little bit more research done because um, there's a couple statements about this being the only one that has this variance and this specific stipulation. Have we looked at research, uh, researched all the other variances to see if we can find out why it is the way that it is? staff can conduct that research uh, as, yeah I have come across some variances through the community uh, however you know extensive research and, and really kind of uh, dialing into to the specific properties um, that would be needed to um, vet that however uh, unfortunately when very you know I've had done a lot of information research on just variances for a number of different properties and unfortunately there's uh, limited information um, probably there there's more explanation in the variance that you have in in terms of the records from 1964 uh, there's more information there than other variances that I've come across basically you know we're requesting a variance for a reduction in one setback or another and they approve it so uh, there's not a lot of justification there's no findings that are made um, you know, when the county was doing these back in the 60s and 70s. So um, I would say that based on my experience and looking at those, um, we're likely not to see a lot of justification or findings for, you know, why they made it in one way or another. But um, staff can absolutely do that research for the Beach Road community. Thank you. I guess, um, thank you, Commissioner Nelson. Um, I, I, you know, City Attorney um, Farrell gave us options of denying, approving, or, or continuing. Um, should we ask the applicant if they want a, a vote on it or if they would like more time to work it out with staff? Is that what you think is uh, appropriate? Because they earlier expressed some willingness to just go to council and see what they get. Mr. Williams, would you if um, would you like a yes or no vote tonight, or would you like some more time to try and review things with staff? So the question, okay. So you had asked a question, if you don't mind. So if we allow for a continuance, which is probably more where I'm going to lean on this one, because I need if I go back to my client and say, hey, they would have approved your project if you got rid of the garage door. Okay. He might say, fine. Um, so if we do a continuance on a date certain, so that's something that he's probably going to want if we can do a date certain that we can, because it might just be as easy that we, I go back to my client and he says, get rid of the garage door. You know, whatever conditions, just get rid of the garage door and we move forward. And so it comes back on a date certain, we've taken the garage door out, you guys say everything's fine because that's what we wanted you to do and we move on to building permits. Or we ask staff to go through and look at all the variances and see if there's any kind of stipulation like this one has and then come back and take our chances again and then you know go from there so right now I would say a continuance to a date certain would be fine so do you do you think that uh, well with respect to you know researching other variances up and down what the county approved 50 years ago um, I, I'm kind of you know agreeing with John that you know We'll see what we find, but and, and you're welcome to to try and bring us some additional evidence, but this one does have documentation and it's relative and specific to this lot and this structure. So, you know, um, I'm not sure. Well, it depends on what's found, okay? Well, one but other, one other question. What, what if we just, and my 
client could fire me. But um, if we say, take the we'll agree to take the garage door out, and you guys approve it. He has every right, if he wants to, to appeal that to counsel. If he doesn't agree with my, uh, probably have a different architect then, but um, he has every right to do that, correct? Yes. He could appeal that, yes. So let's, for purposes, because I can go back to him and say, take the garage door out. Oh, but by the way, you had to go back now to another planning commission. He might say, well, why didn't you just take the garage door out? Um, let's take the garage door out, because that seems to be kind of what's kind of hanging this up. Take the garage door out and hopefully and let, approve let it. Let him deal with it. Okay. And let him deal with it. If he appeals it or whatever, we'll deal with it at that time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Williams. I will now close the public hearing again. So with that, I'm open to a motion, or I can make one whoever, whoever wants to do it. Okay. Um, with that, I'd like to make a motion that we approve Coastal Development Permit CDP 17-0016, variance V17-0001, and Site Development Permit SDP 17-0029 for an addition and remodel to an existing duplex in the residential beach road duplex 18 rbrd 18 zone located at 35099 beach road subject to the following modifications that we delete condition 26 as written that we do not approve the front facade of the proposed carport as configured now with a garage door on it or an opening that's in the size and shape of a, of a potential garage door. That can be worked out with staff. I think we're okay with that. Um, anything else? Did I miss anything? Uh, the lease across the street of the parking spaces. Thank you. And at the time of building permit, that they provide evidence of uh, current and operable lease for the three parking spaces from the railroad or OCTA, whoever it is. I think it's OCTA. Nothing right. else? Does that sound good? Okay, that's my motion. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We could vote. That item passes uh, four votes affirmative with Commissioner Donor not present. Good luck. Moving on. Old business.